Welcome back, Amy and Orla. Let us hear the word today. Let us give God praise. We give Him all honor, praise, and glory. It belong to Him and only Him. I hope when you woke up this morning, you gave Him praise. You gave Him thanks. Because we are truly blessed. We woke up this morning. Hallelujah. We got a chance to get it right. If we got it wrong yesterday, let us shake the dust off and let us get up and start over again. Hallelujah. Give Him praise. Give Father God thanks. Okay? Let Him know you appreciate the fact you woke up this morning. Many have not opened their eyes today. I love you all with the love of the Lord. Father God loves you more. Let us get right into prayer. Hallelujah. Father God, we come to you this morning to say thank you. Thank you, my Father. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we say thanks. We give all honor, praise, and glory to you because it belongs to you and only you, my Father. We know that you are holy, pure, righteous, knowing no sin, just God, faithful and true is thy name. Holy, holy, holy is thy God. Be ye holy, for I am holy, saith the Lord. And let us all wait upon the Lord. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. So let us all wait upon the Lord. I do not worry about tomorrow. Today have enough issues in itself. <laughs> I know I re reworded or what have you, but you understand what I'm saying. Don't worry about tomorrow. Let us get it right today. Let us strive for holiness and holiness only. We thank you, Father, for your outstretched arms. We thank you for you being who you are. You are the Heavenly Father God, the Most High, the Holy One of Israel, our Heavenly Father, creator of the heavens and the earth. You're awesome in all your ways. Your thoughts are way above ours. Your works are wondrous. And we thank you, Father, for the wondrous works that you do for the children of men. Where will we be without you, my Lord? We cannot make it without you. We can do nothing of our own. It's all you. We all like filthy rags, but to God be all the glory. We thank you, Father, for loving on us, loving us, Father God, when we could not love ourselves. On my behalf, I say thank you, Father God, for loving me in spite of myself. I know me, and I know from whence I came, and I have the hope of where I'm going, Lord God, and I know who I am. Glory be to God, who you are to me and who I am in you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. You and I and I and you, there ain't nothing we can't do. And you and I, you, you, you strengthen us, Lord God. It's not by my might, but by your strength that we are strengthened. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Father. Father God, thank you for waking us up this morning. Let us rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Hallelujah. Tell your loved ones about that you love them. We're not promised tomorrow. We're not even promised the rest of this day. And if you haven't given your life to Christ, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? We're not promised tomorrow. I just say this. We all have free freedom, free to choose. And you know, Father God is so awesome. He's so loving, so kind. And He loves us. Oh, He loves you so much. Each and every one of us. He has no respect to persons. I neither do I. But I tell you this. Please don't let that beautiful, loving kindness fool you. Don't let it fool you. Why do I say that? Because He is not someone to play with. He's not. And I tell you this, with all the evil that's running rampant, don't get caught up in that wrath. I'm telling you, you can have free will, but don't let that free will cause you to perish. God is a loving, pure, look how patient, look how loving, look how long he had his outstretched arm, look how long he's been waiting on you, and guess what? That door is closing slightly, soon it's going to shut completely, and we know that he will close the door that no man can open it. And he'll open the door that no man can shut. So, it's up to you. But when that door closed, just as we living just in the days of Noah, of Noah just like in the days of Noah, we were, we were, the ark was closed, and it wasn't Noah that shut it. Because when they were hollering, Noah was trying to open the door. Mm -hmm. There was none of that. When the Lord shuts that door, 
You ain't gonna be no turning around. You got the opportunity. I mean, that door been open for so long. Arm outstretched, love given to you. Through your faults, he keep us. He has kept us. Through our faults and our transgressions, he kept us. And what are we waiting for? Well, I've given my life to Christ. I know whom I serve. And what a mighty God I serve. Hallelujah. You know, he keeps me content. Hallelujah. I can testify that he has never left me nor forsake me. Even when I didn't know, when I wasn't saved, I know the things. And then I look back on in hindsight and realize eh, he's always been there to pick me up when I fell down. <laughs> you can't say that for, you can't say that for any and everybody else that you know. You may have a father, may have a mother, but they can't be there for all the times. Father can be there. Our Heavenly Father God can be there at all times, and He is there. And glory be to God. Hallelujah. We are truly blessed. And we say thank you, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we say thank you. Thank you, Father God, for loving us, loving us when we could not love ourselves. Thank you for keeping us and not forsaking us. Thank you, Father God, for your long suffering, not easy to anger trace that we all need. Thank you, Father God, for your grace and mercy. If not for your grace and mercy, we would not be here. Though we know you may have grace upon whom you may have grace and compassion upon whom you may have compassion. And we know you have no respect to persons and neither do we. Thank you, Father God, for the stripes you took for us to have life. By your stripes we are healed. By your stripes we are made whole. By your stripes, any and every infirmity within our body, from head to toe, any member of our body from head to toe, is gone right here, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we believe in and receive it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Our Lord and Savior, we pray. Thank you, Father God. For your holy angels that watch over us day and night, even while we work and play and while we at rest. Thank you, Father God, for the gift of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the blood of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb, for the remission of our sin paid in full. Though we know we need to work out our own salvation in the interim of the Most High, and we must study to show thyself approved. May we test every spirit. We're living in the days where you must test every spirit. Don't take it for granted. Do not. Because, you know, we know that uh, evil comes in all forms of life. But he is not life. That's a deception. You see. But unless you, you, it's, unless you discern the spirits, which you must. And he can be deceived. Easily deceived. Okay? Don't be deceived. Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, please don't allow, allow us to be deceived, Father God. I count on you and I trust you, Lord God. Please don't allow me to be deceived. Keep me awake at all times, Father God. Keep me on my toes. Keep me on that path of righteousness for your name's sake. And Father God, I love your chastisement. When I'm wrong, Father God, I love the fact that you uh, chastise me and bring me to repentance. I love it, Father God. A child that loves his father, will uh, you will love instruction. And you want the truth. We don't, we don't want uh, watered down. We don't want tickling ears. We want the truth. For the truth shall set you free. And whomever the Son sets free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We can never say enough thank you. We know that. There's only one Lord, one faith, one baptism, only one. You have many names, Father. But there's only one Lord, one faith, one baptism, only one. Not a trinity, only one. And know that at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. He is the Son of God. He is Father God in the flesh. Father God is a Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit came down in that begotten body. And that same Holy Spirit dwells within you and I. And we seek my sincerity and truth with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. We should find Him. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we plead the blood of Jesus over all the listeners, all those in the body of Christ, our family members, lovers, and friends. Father God, we ask a head of protection, a firewall of protection. Around all the listeners, all those in the body of Christ, all our family members, loved ones, and friends. And we ask Father God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, may you please bless all the listeners. Bless those in the body of Christ, all our family members, loved ones, and friends. And we know no weapons formed against us shall prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Father God, we can't say thank you enough. As we go through this day, we pray for all to come to the truth. May they give their life to you today before it's too late. And if they fall in the way for whatever reason, may they repent. And turn from their wicked ways and receive you into their life and be their Lord and Savior. Father God, we pray for the comfort of any and all all over the world. Many who are in need of comfort. Please comfort any and all, including the saints, Lord God. Comfort any and all. We pray for those all over the world that are going through something. Those in uh, 
Nigeria, those in Europe, those in uh, Puerto Rico, those in Louisiana, those in California, those in uh, Hawaii, those in uh, Australia. We got many, many all over the world. We got many here in the United States, in uh, New York, uh, Georgia, Philadelphia, many places, Detroit, Chicago, there are many places, Lord God. Any and all, comfort me, any, any and all, Father God. And what I'm talking about now, there's got a lot of homeless. It is so cold right now. Lord God, protect them. May they have a shelter over their head, clothes on their back, shoes on their feet, money in their pocket, food that you bless as they eat, Lord God. Please bless them with a shelter over their head so their head is not out and about and all evil is running rampant. And their head is not out and about in all extreme temperatures. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, we pray. For any and all that see those I just spoke of, please don't pass them by. When you see somebody, they're homeless, they're cold, whatever. You, we all cold. So we, we all cold when we go out and outside right now. So, you know, think of your fellow man. He's cold too. Don't pass him by. Please don't pass him by. You may be entertaining an angel unawares. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Father God, we can never say enough thank you. We're so very grateful. And we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ for all the laws of abortion to be aborted right here, right now. We pray for all our leaders to do what is right, that they lead not to their own understanding, but acknowledge you in all thine ways, so you may direct their paths, and may they be obedient and do your will. And that don't just apply to our president and our leaders, it apply to each and every one of us. May we all take heed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray for all the safe havens to be built. And all the provisions be made for them to be built. We pray for those in the body of Christ that they continue in their ministry as they seeking you and seeking your face, uh, uh, seeking your face, Lord God, and diligently uh, striving for holiness. May every every need and every provision be made for them that they continue in their ministry, not having need or want for anything, and that you bless them, Lord God, so they continue blessing others. And Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray for. Your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your will, Father God. All those that are still pushing for abortion, I pray for you to come to the truth and stop it. That's an abomination. These children, we are just vessels for these children. We're temporary vessels. They belong to the Most High God. But those that are pushing for abortion and, and, and pushing your own, oh, you have rights. That temple don't belong to you, number one. That holy temple don't belong to you. That's a holy temple. Our Father's a holy Father. So that, that holy temple don't belong to you. You are a vessel and you carry that baby, but that child don't truly belong to you. It belongs to the Most High God. You don't have a right to take his life. So all of you that are crying for, crying out, talking about you have equal rights, you have a right to, you want to, first of all, you women, I don't understand. I, but let's, let's talk. Hallelujah. Let us talk. We're going to talk because the truth shall set you free. For all of you that are crying out for abortion and all you women that are crying out, talking about equal rights, you're not equal to a man. I don't care how you put it. There's a Lord and there's an order of things. That doesn't mean that he's better than you are. No, it doesn't work like that. But the man is the head. So stop trying to compare yourself. You want to be equal to a man. You're not equal to the man. That man is over you no matter what. Okay? There's an order of things. God had an order of things. Okay? And we must stay in our lane. Each and every one of us, we all have a position that we play. A part that we play in this, in this puzzle. This puzzle of life. So let things stay in order. Let us stay in our lane. That doesn't mean, oh, you submit, you submissive and you... But yes, you got to be submissive unto your own husband. You got to submit yourself unto your own husband in honor of the Lord. You must do that. So let us stop thinking, oh, we above the man. We're going to be just like the man. You're not a man. No different than all the abominable acts that's going on where people think, oh, because you a married woman, married woman, you know that is not right. A man marrying a man, that ain't right. You all know that's not right. But then you're crying out for rights because you want to be like a man. You're not a man. A woman is not a woman. A, a woman is not a man. A woman is a woman and a man is a man. And God made a he and a she. He didn't make a he and a he and he didn't make a she and a she. I don't care what you say. So let us all strive. It doesn't mean we don't love. We love you all. Father God loves each and every one of us. But let us strive for holiness, okay? Let us live a life of righteousness for his name's sake. Hallelujah. Let us do what is right. We have to teach the children. The children are learning from us. So if we running around here showing, doing a bomb blacks and showing them that this is what we do, no, it's not. Let us do what is right. Let us do what is right. Hallelujah.
and train and train these children up by the word of God so that they'll learn by the Bible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we can't say thank you enough. We're grateful to you and for you. And Father God, we pray for your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Please let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And Father God, remember your children. Please remember us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As we strive for holiness, help us, Lord God. Help us along the way in everything we say and do. Help us in our marriage, in our homes, in our finances, in our ministry. And everything that we say and do, Father God, help us. Help us, Lord God. We need you. We can. We are not going to make it without you. Hallelujah. We can't say thank you enough, Father God. We're grateful to you and for you. We're grateful for Amy and everything that you do, have done, and will do. We love you. We honor you. We praise you. We worship you. We exalt you. God bless you, Father God. And for all that receive blessings, because Father God, he's continuously blessing us. We are so very blessed. All that receive a blessing, whatever way, shape, form, or fashion that blessing comes, because all good things come from on high. They come from you, my Father. Any that receive a blessing, may you be obedient and do, and do the Father's will with that blessing. Hallelujah. And we love you with an everlasting love, my Father. Everything I do is for your glory and your glory alone, my Father. And your great need be praised, by the way. And we love you with an everlasting love and will never forsake thee. And we seal this prayer to you, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, with a holy kiss. And it's in the holy, precious, mighty, mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen and hallelujah. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Well, if you haven't given your life to Christ, I don't know what you're waiting for. You have the opportunity to do so right here, right now. Hallelujah. Have you heard the good news? The good news is Jesus Christ. He's coming back, and he's coming back sooner than you think. Don't no man know the day or the hour except the Father. Hallelujah. He's coming back, and he's coming back for a spotless, blameless, unblemished bride. And if you are ready to do what is right, if you are only ready to do what is right now, then say this prayer. Hallelujah. You're ready to give your life to Christ, and you're going to honor him, and you're going to seek him in sincerity and truth with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Please say this prayer. I pray to you, Jesus Christ. The Son of God, I am sorry, and please forgive me for my sins against your word. I believe you died on the cross and shed your holy sinless blood and was risen from the dead. Three days later, after being crucified, help me to seek eternal life, live a life of holiness, a life pleasing and acceptable to you. Help me to study your word and obey it and repent daily. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, please repent for your sins. That means you're going to turn from your wicked ways. You're going to strive for holiness and holiness only. And you're not going to sin on purpose. And you ought to be baptized down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Congratulations and God bless you in your walk with Christ. And remember this, it is not a religion. It's a personal relationship between you and the Lord thy God, a commitment and love. We in the body of Christ, we welcome you, my new brother and sister, to the body of Christ. May we edify one another, pray with and pray for one another, pray without ceasing, fast, bear one another's burdens, give love and charity, because they cover a multitude of sin. Hallelujah. We love you, my brother, my new brother and sister, the body of Christ. We love you, and Father God loves you more. God bless you. May we all, that's each and every one of us, read our Bible daily and go down in your knees in prayer. Go down on your knees in prayer and seek the Lord with sincerity and truth, with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and he'll answer you. He'll answer you. He surely will. With that being said, hallelujah. Let us go right into prayer. I mean, excuse me, Lord God. Yes, I want to pray some more. We need to stay in prayer. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father. 
Let us go into scripture. And today, Father God has given me Acts chapters 8 and 9, and we shall read them. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 8. And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial, and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering to every house, and hailing men and women, committed them to prison. Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria, and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, and that were lame, were healed. And there was great joy in that city. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery, and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they gave they had regard, because of that long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then lay they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money, thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise! And go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority, under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him, and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this, He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shear. So opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? 
Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Hallelujah. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through, he preached in, the, in all the cities, till he came to Caesarea. Chapter 9. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand, and brought him into Damascus. And he was there three days, without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus, named Ananias. Unto him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas, for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayed, and had seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in, and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will shew him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house. And putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, hath sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight, and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith, and arose, and was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened, then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name in Jerusalem and came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests? But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus proving that he that this is very Christ. And after that many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. But their laying awake was known of Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night and led him down by the wall in a basket. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples, for they were all afraid of him. And believed not that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him 
and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And he was with them coming in and going out at Jerusalem. And he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Grecians, but they went about to slay him. Which when the brethren knew, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him forth to Tarsus. Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. And it came to pass, as Peter passed throughout all quarters, he came down also to the saints which dwelt at Lydia, at Lydda. And there he found a certain man named Ananias, which had kept his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy. And Peter said unto him, Ananias, Jesus Christ make thee whole, arise and make thy bed. And he arose immediately. And all that dwelt at Lydda and Saron saw him and turned to the Lord. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and, and alms deeds, which she did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, whom when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. And forasmuch as Lydda was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him weeping and chewing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed, and turning him to the body said, Tabitha, arise! And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up, and he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and widows, presented her alive. And it was known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. And it came to pass that he tarried many days in Joppa with one Simon, a tanner. Amen. Hallelujah. In our regular reading, we're still in the first book of Kings, and we're on chapter 21. Jezebel has Naboth killed. 1 Kings chapter 21, Jezebel has Naboth killed. Naboth owned a vineyard in Jezreel near King Ahab's palace. One day Ahab said, Naboth, your vineyard is near my palace. Give it to me so I can turn it into a vegetable garden. I'll give you a better vineyard or pay whatever you want for yours. Naboth answered, this vineyard has always been in my family. I won't let you have it. So Ahab went home angry and depressed because of what Naboth, Naboth had told him. He lay on his bed, just staring at the wall and refusing to eat a thing. Jezebel, his wife, came in and asked, What's wrong? Why won't you eat? I asked Naboth to sell me his vineyard or to let me give him a better one. Ahab replied, And he told me I couldn't have it. Aren't you the king of Israel? Jezebel asked. Get out of bed and eat something. Don't worry, I'll get Naboth's vineyard for you. Jezebel wrote a letter to each of the leaders of the town where Naboth lived. In the letter she said, Call everyone together and tell them to go without eating today. When they come together, give Naboth a seat at the front. Have two liars sit across from him and swear that Naboth has cursed God and the king. Then take Naboth outside and stone him to death. She signed Ava, Ahab's name to the letters and sealed them with his seal. Then she sent them to the town leaders. After receiving her letters, they did exactly what she had asked. They told the people that it was a day to go without eating. And when they all came together, they seated Naboth at the front. The two liars came in and sat across from Naboth. Then they accused him of cursing God and the king. So the people dragged Naboth outside and stoned him to death. <clears throat> the leaders of Jezreel sent a message back to Jezebel that said, Naboth is dead. 
As soon as Jezebel got their message, she told Ahab, Now you can have the vineyard Naboth refused to sell. He's dead. Ahab got up and went to take over the vineyard. The Lord said to Elijah the prophet, King Ahab of Israel is in Naboth's vineyard right now, taking it over. Go tell him that I say, Ahab, you murdered Naboth and took his property. And so in the very spot where dogs lick up Naboth's blood, they will lick up your blood. When Elijah found him, Ahab said, So, my enemy, you found me at last. Elijah answered, Yes, I did. Ahab, you have managed to do everything the Lord hates. Now you will be punished. You and every man and boy in your family will die, whether slave or free. Your whole family will be wiped out, just like the families of King Jeroboam and King Baasha. You've made the Lord very angry by sinning and causing the Israelites to sin. And as for Jezebel, dogs will eat her body there in Jezreel. Dogs will also eat the bodies of your relatives who die in town, and vultures will eat the bodies of those who die in the country. When Ahab heard this, he tore his clothes and wore sackcloth day and night. He was depressed and refused to eat. Some time later, the Lord said, Elijah, do you see how sorry Ahab is for what he did? I won't punish his family while he is still alive. I'll wait until his son is king. No one was more determined than Ahab to disobey the Lord. And Jezebel encouraged him. Worst of all, he had worshipped idols, just as the Amorites had done before the Lord, forced them out of the land and gave it to Israel. Mm. How you go after somebody else's stuff? See how greed? Mm, mm, mm. The Lord ain't sleep. He never sleeps. Don't be greedy. That's for sure. Well, God's willing, tomorrow we'll see it in the first book of Kings and we'll be on chapter 22. Micaiah warns Ahab about disaster. You all tell your loved ones that you love them. We're not promised tomorrow. Love them while you can. And tell them about Father God who is Jesus Christ in the flesh. Father God is a Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit came down in that begotten body. That same Holy Spirit dwells within you and I. If we seek Him in sincerity and truth with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, you should find Him. Hallelujah. Don't have aught with anyone. Please don't have aught with anyone. That means don't be mad with anyone. Don't have anything against anyone. If you have problems with somebody, please uh, resolve them. Please forgive them. You must forgive. As you want Father God in heaven to forgive you, you must forgive your fellow man. I don't care who he is, even if he's your enemy. I love you all with the love of the Lord, and Father God loves you more. You all have yourself a beautiful, blessed day. From young to old, we love you all, and Father God loves you more. God bless you all. Bye-bye.